This video is going to be about the mathematics of an electoral revolution. Now, up until this point, the idea of the Electoral College overturning the election results and taking Donald Trump's 270 vote win away has always seemed like this giant fantasy and it would take this massive revolt. Well, I'm going to show you folks here today how the math isn't even close to massive, how it's actually um, very likely, and I'll walk you through why. The first thing we have to understand is that there's 538 electors, and the current breakdown is 309 electors for Donald Trump and 229 for Ms. Clinton. So if 37 electors defect, that represents about 12% of the Republican electors, or about 7% of the electors as total. So 12%, that means he would need to do better than 88% support amongst the Republicans that were assigned to vote for him as electors. So I'm going to go through different groups of Republicans as constituted now and show you where he doesn't get 88% no matter how you look at it. Let's start in the House. This is where he gets the closest. Um, the current breakdown of the House is 247 Republicans and 188 Democrats. Well, if we go back to our list of Republicans who oppose Donald Trump, and you can go check and see if any of these have changed, but they haven't. Um, I showed you this in a previous video. Okay, that's 32 U.S. representatives, Republican representatives, that oppose him. So if we go back to here and we take this 247 and we subtract 32 from it, because that would represent the Republicans who actually support him, we come to a number of 215. Now, if you pull up a calculator and you do the math, we have a number that's 87%. So only 87% of the Republicans in the House support him. Okay? And he needs 88% of electors. Let's go see if it gets better anywhere else. Here's the state governors. This is the important one or one of the more important ones. 31 Republicans, 18 Democrats. Well, we go back to our list of Republicans who don't support Donald Trump, and we go to our list of governors. There's a list of nine there. What's not listed there is John Kasich, um, because he's listed up here as a former um, primary candidate, so that's 10. So, of the 31 Republicans, he only enjoys the support of 21. Now, the governors are the people who control the electors, the ones that are sent. So, 20 of 21 of 31, that's roughly, I'm not going to get out the calculator, that's roughly 66% support amongst Republican governors. And if you talk about governors as a whole, that's 40% of the country. Now, let's go to the Senate. Republican Party, 54 seats currently held. But if we go back to our list of Republicans, who oppose him? And we go to our U.S. Senators. It's two lists. It's the one on the left and the one on the right there of Senators. And there's a grand total of six. There's 12 listed there, and there's three listed on three that don't support him that are on other lists. Those three being Lindsey Graham, Ted Cruz, and Marco Rubio. That's 15 Senators. So take 15 Senators and subtract it from that number and you come to 39 senators so 39 of 54 senators um, well, I will get the calculator out for that one and 39 divided by 54 72% not of the Senate of the Republican Senate 39 of 100 he only has 39 percent support in the whole in the Senate as a whole. And here's where we started earlier, and this is why it's important. 
Now, at the first presidential debate, he was standing on stage with 11 other people, and the very first question that was asked by Brett Baer was, if, in the event of one of the people on the stage being selected, would everyone else who wasn't that person commit right then and there to support him? The only person who didn't commit to that support was Donald Trump. So everybody else on stage swore that if Donald Trump were to win, they would support him. Now, of these people, now there's 17 listed here, there are eight of these 17 who have still, to this day, after having made the pledge, on stage, in front of millions of people, withheld their support. And they've done so not believing at all it was going to be political suicide. Bush? Um... Carly Fiorina, Gilmore, Lindsey Graham, Bobby Jindal, John Kasich, Pataki, Rubio and Cruz got drugged kicking and screaming, but if given the opportunity to, to kick him out, they would. So that's roughly 50%. So among other candidates that in high-ranking positions, 50%, we covered the percentage in the governorship, the Senate, and the House. Now, there's been this speculation about um, what happens if it does go to the House and they can't decide in the first round as to whether or not who can or can't be chosen. It's never happened. It's never been addressed. But on all the reading that I've done, you know, they do have the ability to make sausage. They don't have to... Uh, they won't be slaved to just three people, even though that's what everything says here online. And I find it interesting that the people that are trying to shoot down my videos and trying to uh, disprove and debunk everything I say are all going to uh, Republican shill websites and, uh, and telling me what they're saying. Let me give you a brief history. A week before the election, when everybody thought that it was going to be Hillary Clinton winning, and it was going to be Donald Trump and his supporters contesting and fighting and alleging illegal votes and all this kind of stuff. When everybody was saying that a week before the election, I was saying this. I was saying, no, Trump is going to win, and it's going to be the Hillary supporters doing this. But everybody told me I was wrong, everybody told me I was crazy, and everybody told me I was a conspiracy theorist. But I was right. Then, after the Faithless Elector movement starts almost immediately... Then I have people telling me, it's illegal, it's impossible, they can't do it, it'll never happen. And then, when people actually start to do their homework, they're like, oh, well, okay, it can happen, but now it probably won't. And then when people actually start resigning their seats, like it's happened, and pledging to not vote for Mr. Trump, then they start threatening, oh, it's going to be civil war, and we're going to revolt, and this is what all the pundits say, and this is what all the experts say. All the experts have been wrong. All the experts were wrong with Romney, they were wrong about this election, and they're going to be wrong about this. Because these people who are talking to you have an agenda. I don't have an agenda. Yeah, my videos are monetized, but it's pocket change. I put this out because it's the truth. And when you really did your own homework and you looked at it from, you know, without those either Republican or Democrat eyes on, you could see what was going to happen. You could see exactly what was going to happen because Donald Trump pulled a bunch of people in to vote this time that had never voted before. And so there was no way to predict the outcome. So if anybody did doubts the last little rant I just went on, go ahead and look back at the history of my videos going back to November 1st. I'd even put posts on Facebook going all the way back to the 23rd of October talking about how the Electoral College was going to take this out of the hands of the people. And there's links in my videos. If you look through, you'll find them. Anyway, the last thing I want to talk about is this thing called a quorum and why this is important. Okay, it's basically the minimum number of voting members um, that have to be attending for anything to be voted on and for it to actually have teeth or have weight. In the House and in the Senate, usually it's 51%, and for some of the more important things, it can be up to two-thirds. In our country, we don't even hardly have a quorum that's voting for president. What that means is that almost half the people in this country don't vote. So that when any candidate, whether it's on the left or the right, gets 
a win in an election, they only represent a fourth of the people. And a lot of people say, well, if you don't vote, you don't have the right to say anything. That's total crap. And you know why that's crap? Because every member of the House of Representatives and every member of the Senate is given a right to what's called an abstention on any and every decision put for them, put before them. They can abstain, and that's their right. They're not forced to vote. In fact, by abstaining, they actually do have the ability to affect quorum and affect whether something gets even the minimum number of votes to be considered to be put into law. And that's why I think these laws that we have on the books about every eight years we have to elect somebody new is just asking for trouble. If half the people in this country think things are fine and we don't really need a change, but the other half want to fight over it, and then the eventual winner gets, you know, the eventual winner in this case didn't even get 50%, hardly 50% support of his own party. I mean, and the other, on the other side, you had, you know, Hillary Clinton bullied her way through her election too, and half of the Democrats wanted Bernie, Bernie Sanders. So you're talking this minuscule number of people on either side that are controlling and pushing events, but then saying, you know, our voices have spoken and we're the majority. No, you're not. You're a tiny group of people that just yelled the loudest this time. That's it. So hopefully this video helped. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get more comments from a bunch of Trump trolls. And, you know, I actually got threatened by a member of Anonymous yesterday. It was actually hilarious. And, you know, I didn't take it too seriously. I blocked the guy, but I've noticed my view counts have... Uh, taking a nosedive. So this guy had threatened my PC and threatened my channel. So, eh, maybe I'm on the right path. Who knows? You know, everything else in this election has been unpredictable and everything that's been proven to be right is wrong and up is down and left is right. So anyway, the circus continues. God bless.